and welcome to another edition of Currently in Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano. On today's program, Rick Jones here from Interfaith Social Services. We'll talk about the upcoming Stop the Stigma 5K road race and other activities going on at Interfaith. First, though, as always, we take a look at the weather and the news for you. Currently in Quincy, brilliant sunshine, 47 degrees right now. It'll get uh, windy later on this afternoon, but we'll have lots of sunshine with highs into the mid-50s. Not as cold tonight as it was last night. Lows drop off into the mid-40s, and then we turn rather damp much for the rest of the week starting tomorrow with a chance of showers as tomorrow again in the mid 50s looks like a, a cool raw damp day here on Wednesday off and on showers highs only in the mid 40s look at Thursday it will be showery but Thursday's highs could hit 70 degrees right now again we have sunshine 47 degrees here in Quincy in the news today, the Quincy Teachers Union is expected to vote today on a new three-year contract that was reached back on March 24th. Union President Gail Carvalho says the deal addresses some of the key issues surrounding parental leave, teacher pay, longevity, and classroom prep time. The bargaining team for the city and the QEA's bargaining team of 11 uh, were able to come to uh, come to terms. We we're able to get um, some movement on both sides. Uh, I think I think everyone's walking away pretty happy. We are taking the same um, salary increase that all the other unions uh, are taking, uh, but we're also um, seeing some movement in longevity pay, which is something we felt really strongly about. Uh, the city recognized their uh, the need to equalize uh, parental leave benefits across the city to extend to even our, our, our members in the QBA and, um, uh, and prep time. Carvalho says the new contract does provide for those 3% pay raises for each of the three years, but does not address issues including a sick leave bank and hiring of additional paraprofessionals. The agreement was reached after the contract talks went to state mediation. It covers the period from last September till August of 2025. Now, the full union is expected to vote on the deal at Quincy High School at 3 o'clock this afternoon, and then the full school committee will vote on the contract later this week. Well, as State Auditor Diana DeZoglio continues to push for an audit of the state legislature, local legislators are pushing back. House Speaker Ron Mariano of Quincy and Senate President Karen Spilka have both said that DeZoglio doesn't have the power to audit the legislature. In Quincy, State Representative Tacky Chan says the records that DeZoglio is seeking are already publicly available. Ludicrous about this conversation. It's like, dude, you, if you're that dumb, you can't figure that out on your own. I don't know what to tell you. This is, I think, that everyone but the advocates can figure out on their own. And I find it perplexing uh, that I'm confident that 99.99% .99 of you all listening to this can figure this out. But that teeny tiny part of the group that's advocating can't. Chan admitted that the records of conference committee votes are not posted online, which is something that DeZoglio is advocating for. However, he says they are available by request from the clerk of the legislature. Supporters of preserving and restoring the Ruth Gordon Amphitheater in Quincy are quickly gaining momentum after a standout rally in front of City Hall last Thursday. Ward 5 City Councilor Chuck Phelan, whose district includes the amphitheater, applauds the group's efforts. When community groups come together and they actually band together and they come up with a plan and a constructive plan from what I can see, that's when the city should really we really got to take listen, take heed, and I think we want to restore it back to what it was and have regular performances there. So, thank you, Kathy. Thank you for everything you did. The friends of the Ruth Gordon Amphitheater say that they would like to see the facility rejuvenated, made handicapped accessible, and create a program of activities for that venue. The Friends of the Amphitheater will make a formal presentation about their plans at the Thomas Crane Public Library in Quincy Center on April 12th at 7 p.m. The mayor has said that any future plans for the amphitheater are on hold until a public discussion can be held. 
Quincy Ward 3 City Councilor Ian Kane has announced his intentions to seek re-election. Kane was first elected to the seat back in 2015, then re-elected in 2017, 2019, and 2021. Kane pointed to past successes he says include being a fiscal advocate, working to improve streets and sidewalks, working to create a municipal broadband network, preserving open space on Harriet Avenue, and co-founding PorchFest. So far, Kane has no challengers. Nomination papers will be available from the city clerk's office on May 2nd. They're due back by July 11th. A preliminary election, if needed, will be on August 29th. The final election in Quincy this year is November 7th. Well, high school seniors here in Quincy have a little better understanding of the financial challenges of adulthood after the 15th annual Credit for Life Fair. Seniors from both high schools gathered at the Terrell Room to learn about budgets, expenses, and navigating the world of credit. Michael Rothberg from Bay State Financial told the students that the fair simulates real-world money issues. Keep in mind, your objective today is to complete a monthly spending plan that accounts for all of your needs and wants while, you, while you're staying at or below your monthly income. As you visit each booth, spend and spend money, be sure to keep on track of how much you have to spend on your spending plan and continuously calculating what you have left in your budget. Once you've visited all 15 booths in, around the room, you're required to visit credit counseling one final time to tally up your columns and make sure your credit payment is where it needs to be. Students visited those 15 booths set up by volunteers from the Quincy School Community Partnership, including local businesses, financial institutions, and nonprofit organizations. Students also had to budget for unexpected reality checks, such as a sudden car repair or an unplanned trip to a Red Sox game while staying within their budget. It's our check of news for you today. Coming up, Rick Doan from Interfaith Social Services of Quincy will join us next. Welcome back. It's uh, actually a nice day for a run today. I'm sure the folks at Interfaith Social Services are hoping April 29th is just as nice for the annual Stop the Stigma 5K. It's that time. Yeah, April's upon us, and Rick Doan is here to tell us all about it. Hey, Rick. Thanks for having me. Hey, thanks for coming over. Good yeah, to see you. It, it never rains on 5K day. <laughs> Ever. No, but even if it did, it's a rain or shine event. It's a go. Yeah, so yeah. We're, we'll be there no matter what. And it's amazing. In the, the few years that it has rained yeah. on the day of the 5K, people still come out and we have a great time. And that's why we do it at the Kennedy Center, too. Yes. At the, so that we have some inside You can space. duck inside if yeah. need be, yeah. yeah. We can uh, do registration in there and everything. Um, how many years now for, for Stop the Stigma? Oh, we are coming up on the... 45th. Wow. This is our 40. We're coming up on our 50th. Okay. We're coming up on you, the 50th. You didn't even know. You had to think about it. No, I had to think. You gotta, <laughs> it takes a minute to do some math. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're coming up on the 50th. So 1973? The no, it was not this year. Oh. But I believe next year is our 50th. Okay. Uh, so yeah, that'll be a big year. Wow. All right. <laughs> you have to do something special you, for the 50th. You don't commemorate the 49th. <laughs> <laughs> no, you just gear up for the yeah, 50th, exactly. right? Yeah. Um, still, that's a very impressive track record. It that, is. Pardon the pun, it really is. And, it's, yeah. and it, it's, the event has evolved and grown over the years. Yeah. Um, and it didn't start off as a Stop the Stigma 5K. Right. It was the South Shore Walk. Yep. And it supported a variety of our programs. And several years ago, we said, we want to do something more as an organization to raise awareness about mental illness mm -hmm. and addiction. And that's why we started this event. Right. And would you say that it succeeded? For sure. Really? It has the number of participants, the enthusiasm people feel. Um, it's really amazing. Yeah. yeah and th that's the purpose of it, to come together and say, we as a community support those who have mental illness and addiction. It is not a character flaw. There's nothing wrong with somebody that has mental illness or addiction. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It is an illness like any other. 
and we should treat it that way. Yeah. Do they go hand in hand, mental illness and addiction? Addiction or? is a mental illness. Okay. All right. So, and as many people know, it's hereditary, much like yes. bipolar yeah. and, and depression are hereditary. People know that addiction likewise. Yeah. And so it needs treatment. Just like any other illness needs treatment, addiction needs treatment. Sure. Before we uh, talk a little bit more about the uh, race, how are things going at Interfaith so far this year? They're, we're, they're busy. Busy. Um, yeah. Anybody who drives by our offices any morning can visually see how busy it is. Lines. The lines yeah. of, of cars, of people waiting outside. It started last spring. It was gas prices, mm -hmm. and they shot up. And then when they were coming down, inflation was going up. And then as we've dealt with inflation, you had utility incre outrageous increases this winter. Yeah. Um, and then it was SNAP assistance being cut. Yes. Um, and now it's Medicaid. So it's, there is... Uh, it's like time and time again, there's things that keep happening that cause people to come in. And we have amazing volunteers, many of whom are from Quincy, mm -hmm. that come in every day to help staff our programs. And they're helping us keep up with it. And people who donate right. to help us purchase all of the food and everything else we need to keep up with things. Speaking of SNAP, uh, I know the federal subsidies uh, have expired, but Massachusetts is continuing it for another three months or so. It's a stopgap. Okay. <laughs> it's great yeah. for three months. Yeah. Um, and it's, in, in, in bottom line, it's not going to change a whole lot three months from now or now. Um, we're grateful we get that help. Yes. And yeah. hopefully some of the other, you know, inflation will come down a little bit and utility rates are already starting to come down. So, you know, maybe it'll help people. Yeah. We got, in, in reality, I mean, the subsidies really haven't kept up with inflation, um, so you're still behind the eight ball even even with the additional help. Well, and also there's people who uh, inherently might make just a little bit more than they would to qualify for some of Right, qualify so you bumped those. out of the, the system. And so they wouldn't yeah. even qualify for SNAP. Yeah. Or people who are undocumented Yes. that wouldn't be able to qualify for it. People with children in the home, if they have young children, they qualify for a WIC. But other children in the home, once they age out of that, this is the only option for yeah. them. That's a great point, too, that interfaith, um, you don't discriminate. It's no. Yeah. Anybody who needs help, yeah. we're going to get them the help that they need. Yeah. 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 Uh, I always like to ask, what do you need right now? Uh, well, people to register for our Stop the Stigma well, 5K. Obviously, yes. That's <laughs> our big thing right now. Okay. Uh, we've encouraged everybody to not do food drives anymore. Really? Um, I think more food pantries have been, privately, we've always talked about this. Yes. Publicly, I hope more will start talking about okay. it. Okay. We don't need food drives. Okay. We need community's help, well, for sure. It's important to put your time and efforts into where you need most, right? Exactly. Yeah. But what we need is hygiene products. Okay. We need soap, shampoo, deodorant, toothbrushes pads, tampons, toilet paper. Those are the items really needed by our food pantry. We are grateful for every food of drive. Of course. Yeah. We love yeah. the food drives. But if somebody asks us what we need, yeah. which you did, <laughs> it's uh, the hygiene items. Well, because you can't get those items at the Greater Boston Food Bank, right? Or if we can, it's limited okay. and yeah. it's not, the, the ability is, the, the, the quantity isn't there, right. quality might not be there. Um, so if somebody's going to go into a store and they're going to buy a box of mac and cheese for a dollar, or they're going to buy a deodorant for a dollar. Um, we'd rather have them buy the deo deodorant or donate the dollar to us. Okay. So All we right. can go out and buy a case of mac and cheese. Or you can cheese. stretch that dollar a <laughs> yeah. lot further, right? Exactly. Yeah. And those items that you're talking about, those personal hygiene items, um, sp speak about inflation, those have just soared. And most of them are taxable. Well, and so. that's why we encourage people, Dollar Tree yes. is, uh, is one of our friends, <laughs> and that's where we source a number of items from. Okay. Um, because they keep the items affordable. Yeah. Yeah. Are you still getting the, um, the grocery stores helping with their oh, you yeah. know, day old m merchandise? Yeah. Half of, so la we distribute about a million pounds of food every year yep. through our food pantry. Wow. About half of that comes from supermarkets, many of which are right here in Quincy. Yes. So the day-old bread, the rotisserie chickens, the sandwiches, the meat that's close to the best buy date, the milk that's close to the best buy date, they donate that to us. Okay. We are so grateful for Star Market, Stop and Shop, BJ's, 
Um, they are donating to us on a regular basis. Um, we're picking up at seven different stop and shops right wow. now throughout the region. Uh, but right here in Quincy, those stop and shops, two, we're picking up at both locations. They're great partners to us and the um, other emergency food providers. Target in North Quincy, mm -hmm. great partner. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. I didn't realize it was that high, 50% of the donations. That's amazing. You count on that then. That's great. Oh, yeah. yeah. We count on it. It's responsible environmentally. True. This is yes. food that otherwise would have entered the waste stream. Mm -hmm. Perfectly good food yep. that is now getting to people's tables. So forget the cost component. It is environmentally more responsible. And there's laws in Massachusetts that, in that make businesses do this. Oh, interesting. I didn't yeah. know that. Okay. And I mean, although it's close to, you say, this, you know, the best buy date, it's going to get used right away by, by folks who need it. It's, it's not, it's not going to go to waste. There's no such thing as an expiration date. Right. Yeah. It always says Best Buy. Yep. So like milk, it's good for a week after that date. Yep. And if we get it, and it's three days before that, and we get it to a client, that's 10, days, got 10 days they have that milk. Sir, and if you have one or two kids, that's going to be gone in a Absolutely. couple of days anyway. Sure. Absolutely. Um, other programs, uh, how are they doing? You've got your uh, thrift shop. You've got, of course, the counseling center. Yeah, we yep. always welcome. Well, volunteers is one of the things we always need. Okay. People who are looking to give back that can come in and commit to a three-hour shift once a week. Working in our food pantry, in our thrift shop, we welcome that. Our, our thrift shop, people can donate. They make an appointment online or call us, okay. and they can make a donation. Uh, all my, my outfit all came from there. <laughs> I know there. you always say uh, that. It really does. <laughs> yeah. All my clothes come from there. They have great, great stuff in the thrift shop. Well. I'm thinking spring cleaning, a lot of folks are going to start to go through their closets and their, you know, foot lockers and yeah. storage facilities. So here's a great opportunity. And it, and it benefits our programs. Sure. The, it's one of our biggest fundraisers after our gala is our thrift shop and then our 5K. Okay. Um, but as far as the counseling center goes, yeah. we're actually moving the counseling center into a satellite office. Really? Next to our building to give us more space because the food pantry needs more space, yeah. but also to give the the counseling center more space for them to expand and and not have the hustle and bustle of everything else going on in our building. Right, well, they're dealing with sensitive issues. Uh, exactly. You know, with folks who want some privacy, and, and I'm sure. It it's a sacred time. Yeah. A counseling session. Yeah. So did you have to rent a, another We store? are, really? yeah. Alex Ricciardi, he's the, land, the, the landlord right next to us. Um, Great, great landlord. We're wonderful working with him. Yeah. Figuring out how to build out that space and okay. how it'll be best for us. Okay. Do you need more counselors, Rick? Always. Do you? Yeah. We are always looking to hire more therapists. Um, you know, even if they can just give us two or three sessions a week. Okay. That's two or three more people that are being helped. Okay. Um, on our website, that it's one of the job posting that's always listed mm. is for a therapist, and so we're always looking for more people to join our team. Okay. Um, is the first four sessions used to be free? That's still true. Still true. The first four sessions, it's our breaking down financial barriers initiative yeah. that we don't want it to stand in anybody's way thinking, I don't have enough money, I'm not going to qualify. They pick up the phone and we're going to get them in to see somebody regardless of their ability to pay. Okay. Let's talk about Stop the Stigma. Yeah. Uh, April 29th, what's going to be happening? Well, it used to be sort of a carnival kind of experience. <laughs> yes. And we don't do that anymore. What? Because <laughs> I'd come here and I would talk about the games and bouncy, all that kind yeah. of stuff. And we didn't end up talking about what it was really all about. Oh, all right. And that's, it's about stopping the stigma of mental illness and addiction. It's about helping encourage people reach out for help. And that's what this event is for. You have our community coming together, filling the streets. And it's great. It's professionally timed. And we got fun stuff going on. We have a raffle that was just launched today. Okay. So anybody can participate in that raffle. They can buy raffle tickets now. Okay. And they can buy them that day. We have some games going on that the day of the 5K. But it's a beautiful route. Uh, it leaves from the senior center in, uh, in over by Squantum. Mm -hmm. It goes up and around Squantum and back, professionally timed. Um, it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Starts uh, Saturday, that Saturday morning, and you know you're wrapped up and can have some nice plan a nice lunch out at Marina Bay afterwards. Ah, okay, there you go. Yeah. All right. um, we're seeing some pictures here from, from some past events. Oh, yeah. Um, do you get teams that participate as well? We do. We yeah. have great businesses here in Quincy that our Bella Insurance is a great 
uh, partner. Mm -hmm. They are a sponsor of the event, and they put a big team together. We have several businesses here in Quincy that will put it together, including Maria Drost mm -hmm. Counseling mm -hmm. Services. It's another program here in Quincy providing mental health counseling. Yes. They've formed a team, and they're participating in this. And that just shows this is a community effort to raise the awareness and help people overcome the stigma. Yeah, so at, at the uh, 5K, do you actually talk about you know, the, the, the overall purpose and mission of yeah. the race? You do. We have actually a big board that we ha in encourage people to write who they're running or walking okay. for or to tell their story. Okay. Um, and it's really moving. We post that on the wall in our office. Hmm. And then all year, I, I look at it every day yeah. and see the notes from people. I'm running for Johnny. We're here to support you, Mom. You know, it's people that they're there. This is a, a physical way they can say, yeah. we love you, we support you. Well, it's, I mean, we hear that story so many times from folks who participate um, in the Boston Marathon, you know, for the same reason. Yeah. Uh, they're running for a cause, a purpose, or, or a person. So here's a way to, to do it right in your own community. Well, it can be, fr it can be really frustrating. It, not just frustrating, but, you know, like you feel helpless. You can't do anything to help somebody who's suffering. Yeah. But this is a way that at least a physical act you can show. Yeah. And a lot of people talk about the pandemic and they say, well, the pandemic led to increased mental illness. Mm -hmm. We don't believe that. No. It is th what happened during the pandemic is more people luckily started talking about mental illness, started talking about their own mental health. And it made it so that people felt more comfortable. Hmm. And we've seen a significant increase in the number of people reaching out for help since then. Why did it make it more comfortable for people to talk about? The more people that talk about it, yeah. the less stigma there is. Yeah. So someone who might have said, um, you know, I don't want to admit that I have depression. I don't want to talk about the anxiety that I'm feeling. When they hear their peers and more people talking about it, when they hear in the news celebrities talking about their mental illness and their and how they cope with mm -hmm, it, mm -hmm. it makes it so that more people feel comfortable talking about it and reaching out for help. Okay. And that's the purpose, stopping that stigma. Yeah. So that nobody feels like there's a cultural barrier. Do the healthcare institutions take it seriously enough, do you think? Are they doing enough to, to cope with uh, mental illness? I think everybody is taking it more seriously, yeah. but there aren't enough clinicians. And the sad fact is, one of the biggest areas of need is children. It is, on a daily basis, we get calls about 11-year-olds with suicidal ideations. Really? With teenagers, six-year-olds, eight-year-olds, really? little kids that need help, and there are not enough providers out there. Mm -hmm. We need more people to go into this field. Okay. We need more people to choose to help with mental illness, to help become workers overcoming this. Um, and so hope that's you know raising awareness, talking about this. Hopefully it'll encourage more people to go into this field. Yeah, I wonder if the pandemic didn't uh, contribute to some of the young people experiencing those those issues. They were so isolated for two or three years. Yeah, it's part of it yeah. that that isolation definitely was a triggering event mm -hmm. for many people. Um, but we're still seeing it. You okay. know, we're out of the pandemic, and we're still seeing increases mm -hmm. in the number of people reaching out for help, which is not a bad thing. Right. It's yeah. a crisis that we don't have enough people to help them. Okay. And this isn't just interfaith. This is the whole system. And we need more people to, to reach out. So unfortunately, there are wait lists at many different places. Um, if someone had a broken leg and they reached out, they're not put on a wait list. Right. Someone with depression or anxiety shouldn't be put on a wait list. But for some reason, people think that there just aren't enough people to treat them. How many counselors do you have? We have 10 therapists. Okay. But like I said, we're always looking for more. How many? Oh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I would love to get to that position. I love to get to that point where it's like, because it gives us an opportunity to fundraise more. Yeah. The more we can fundraise, the more people we're helping. And this isn't just us. This is Bay State Community Services, Maria Drost. We are all in this together. This is Aspire. You know, yep. we are working as a community to help people, and um, we need more community members to do it. Okay.
Um, Stop the Stigma, how much does it raise, Rick? This, we, we will raise about $100,000. Wow. Um, but, but, you know, like I said, it's, a, it's the beginning. Yes. Um, we need a lot more help to do it. And each person who registers, that registration fee is paying for one session. Okay. So right. even if you're just walking, because you don't have to run, you can walk. Right, exactly. Yeah. You can walk. Or you can just register and not come. Exactly. And yeah. that's okay. It's okay, too. <laughs> or just make a donation. Right. Um, or buy a raffle ticket. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, the t-shirt t deadline expired, I know, so that's that's done. It is. Unfortunately, t yeah. T-shirt deadline passed, okay. but uh, if people want to get a t-shirt for next year, yep. Maybe they got to register early. <laughs> okay. Well, because otherwise we'd end up buying all these T-shirts and yeah, people weren't there. Yeah. And we purchased the T-shirts for the people that register. Uh, how many folks are you hoping to have uh, this year? Um, upwards of 600. Wow, that's great. Yeah, each okay. year it keeps growing. And Excellent. we are, it's really amazing. Yep. It's a special day. I know there's a corporate match uh, for folks who make a donation. Yes? There, it depends on the corporate. There, right, there's a right. match. Yeah, there's, um, there's lots of ways people can, can get it. And if somebody has, if their employer can match them, we encourage people to do that. It's a missed opportunity. A lot of people will donate to something, but then don't get that match from their employer. Right, yeah, which really yeah. Um, doubles your, your giving power. Exactly. Great to see you as always, Rick. Really Good appreciate it. Good to see you it. too. Thank you. Thanks for helping get the word out to Quincy. You're very welcome. Just enough time to check the weather for you for the rest of the day today. It's kind of the pick of the week, so get out and enjoy it. Sunshine, a little breezy, but in the mid-50s, uh, low 40s this evening. Then we start to turn wet beginning tomorrow with a chance for some showers. Better chance here on Wednesday. It'll be cooler, too, but look at Thursday. It'll be wet but warm. 70 degrees is not out of the question. Thanks again to Rick Doan for joining us from Interfaith Social Services. My pleasure. Thanks to our crew. Thank you for watching. Friday here in the show, folks from the Quincy Art Association will be joining us. Meantime, go to our website. It's qatv.org. There is all of our latest programs there. There's news and information, uh, video on demand, live streaming, and a lot more. For all of us here at QATV, I'm Joe Catalano. Have a great week.